I have I have Lindsay and Anita on the back end who will be answering any questions that come up. If you want to drop those in the Q&A, that's the best place to get your questions answered. They come right to them or if they want, they'll um, push them out to me live. So first we'll talk about the different uh, cutting machines, how they fall into their families. And then we'll talk about the Cricut ecosystem, which includes um, which will include all of the materials that Cricut offers and a good conversation about that. So sit back, relax. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So we have a presentation and we'll talk about all the different parts of Cricut. Let me just get that started from the beginning. Okay, so hello Cricut, hello everyone. <laughs> um, Let's go ahead and get started talking about the different machines and what it means to have Cricut in your life. Now, I'm hoping, Lindsay, can you give me a head nod? Does that look right? I know I was having a little trouble. Okay, we're looking good. Okay, so one of my favorite um, quotes is from Brene Brown, and she says, we are born makers. We move what we're learning from our heads to our hearts through our hands. And this really speaks to me as a crafter because crafting is about having a creative idea and bringing it to life with your hands. And when you give somebody a crafted gift, it's really a gift from the heart. So that's, I, I just keep that in the back of my mind as I'm crafting along. Now, your creative needs and what you want to build your craft are as unique and individual as you are. So let's talk about who should have a Cricut Smart Cutting Machine. So, oops. So I think everyone should have a Cricut Smart Cutting Machine. And my cocktail party pitch when people ask me, well, what is a, what is that? What is a Cricut? Basically, a Cricut, when I approach um, people who aren't familiar with Cricut, I, I sort of approach it like, well, think about your printer. So you write up a paper or a letter on your computer using Microsoft Word or something like that, and then you send that document to your printer and your printer converts it into a piece of paper with words on it. So my cocktail party pitch is that a Cricut smart cutting machine is very much like that in that you use a program to put down ideas and build um, images and something creative. And through a software, you send it over to your smart cutting machine. And instead of putting words on a piece of paper, it actually cuts out your images in over, if you go up to the maker, over 300 different materials that it cuts it out of. So really, if you do anything with a pair of scissors, anything creative with a pair of scissors, then a, a Cricut smart cutting machine is right for you. So meet the family. So I get a little bit passionate about Cricut and what I can create with them. Um, so much so that I really do think everyone should have a Cricut cutting machine. And because I get to do these classes, I get to play with all the different machines. So just to sort of get you started and familiar with Cricut, there's three different families of machines. We have the Cricut Joy, which is our smallest machine. The Cricut Explore Air 2, which is our most popular machine. And then the Cricut Maker. And the Cricut Maker is um, the machine that really is does the heavy lifting on your crafting. Um, so when I think about which machine or which family is right for you, think about your machine as your plus one on an RSVP. It's the, it's the machine that gets you. It, it really gets your creative soul and it inspires you to do more and to be more. So now this summer, Cricut introduced the, the threes, the three machines, Cricut Explore 3 and the Cricut Maker 3. Joy is still just alone as little Cricut Joy, um, but we do have, so in the Cricut Explore family, you have Explore Air 2s and Explore 3s and the legacy machines, the Explores. And then we also have the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Maker 3. Now you'll notice as you're learning about the different machines and what they can do, we went from Cricut Maker right to Cricut Maker 3 and didn't have a two in between there. So we could sort of even the playing field as far as the names go. 
And what we're going to do today is explore the different machines so you can get a broad overview of what each machine offers and which one is the best fit for your crafting needs. Okay, so let's talk about Cricut Joy. The Cricut Joy is our smallest cutting machine. It's simple and compact. It's perfect for quick everyday projects like cards, labels, and vinyl stickers. Um, it's really so compact. It weighs like 4.9 pounds. So you can really take it with you wherever you craft. And it's great if you have a small apartment or um, if you're just crafting in a smaller workspace and you have to clean up more often. Now I've zoomed in on this so you can see that the Cricut Joy has one housing. And right here where you can see the blade, these are called housings. And this is where the in the Cricut Joy, you can put the Cricut um, fine point blade that's specifically for the Cricut Joy. So Cricut Joy really has its own line of materials and tools. So you have a Cricut Joy um, blade and then a stylus will fit in there as well as specific Cricut pens. And you just rotate those out of the um, housing area. Now to go bigger again, let's look out. And Cricut is, the Cricut Joy is our most portable machine. It works with Bluetooth. Um, all of our Air 2s, Maker, and, and the 3s all work with Bluetooth. So that allowed Cricut to create an app that works just for the Cricut Joy, which really makes it um, fast and easy to create projects using a mobile device. With the Cricut Joy, you can cut 50 or more materials, um, things like iron-on, cardstock, vinyl, paper, and Joy Smart materials. Now, you're going to have a lot of questions about Joy Smart materials or Smart materials in general, and we will go over that as we move along. Basically, Smart materials are materials of vinyl and iron-on materials that work in the machine without requiring a cutting mat. So the way the machine works is you take your paper, let's say cardstock, and you put it on a cutting mat, and then you insert the cutting mat into the machine. Well, Cricut got smart and they invented smart materials, which allows for uh, longer cuts because you don't need to use a mat. So with the Cricut Joy and smart materials, you can cut four feet long or make a repeated um, cut that goes 20 feet long. So it's really super great for banners, um, great for borders on walls, or if you want to do a welcome sign. Let's look at some other fun things that you can create with the Cricut Joy. So Cricut Joy, again, it's small, it's compact, and it allows you to craft on the go and craft in a variety of different locations. Because it's so small, it's easy to take it into the kitchen and label your kitchen pantry or have your, your kids might want to use it to label their things. Um, you can write with the Cricut Joy on specific Cricut vinyl and label, use those to make labels. Now, in the center here, this is a really neat product that's exclusive to Cricut Joy. It is the Cricut Joy cutting mat for cards, for folded cards. So you can take a folded card and slip it into the mat. And up here on the right with the congrats, cut out a card like this. And you can do this in 10 minutes or less. And this is perfect for those times when you forgot the birthday card or the congratulations card and you, you're headed out the door and you just need a quick card. So the Cricut Joy really does offer a lot of versatility um, for you as a crafter. And um, you can cut, again, 50 different materials and it's small and compact. Now, if you want to go a little bit bigger and make your DIY dreams come true, you might look at the Explore family. So the Explore machines are um, wider. They cut the Explore 2 um, with the mat cuts up to 11 and a half inches. The Explore 2 does use a cutting mat. Um, so you can put your materials over a hundred different materials you can cut with the Explore 2 and you put your materials on the mat and send it through the machine. The Explore 2 also has, um, it's a two system 
um, housing here. So it can write, it can draw, and it can score. And it works with six different tools to achieve different looks. So let's take a little bit closer look in here and explore some of these features. So the mat slides in here, and there's two mats that work with the Cricut Explore Air, the 12 inches by 12 inch mat, or the 12 inches by 24 inches. So the longest cut you can do with the Explorer Air 2 is 24 inches long. Now, it does have this dual housing system here, and you can see that there's a clamp A and a clamp B. In the clamp A, you can insert a pen or a stylus tool, and in the clamp B, you can insert some of your cutting tools, um, some of the different cutting blades, like, it comes with the extra fine point blade, but you can add the deep point blade, a bonded fabric blade, the scoring stylus, a foil transfer tool, and a writing tool. Now, it also has a section up here to hold your tools. And then if you move over to the right, the Explore Air 2 has this unique dial that allows for quick uh, material setting. So you just rotate the dial to the type of material you're using and it can cut that material. It also does allow you to use a custom setting so you can go right to the setting of your material in the software. So that's really fun. Now just to go ahead and go over a couple of the different things that you can create with the Explore. It's perfect for scrapbooking, for larger cards, for home decor, for embellishments, personalization, and my favorite, seasonal t-shirts. So Explore lets you work with um, so many different materials you can use. Let's just go over some of the materials used here. So this shirt was made with um, iron on vinyl, both in a shimmer and a glitter. Here on the top, right here in the center, this is a scrapbook page that has been created um, making three-dimensional uh, images along with cards. So your card stock works great in the Explorer too. You can definitely use materials like infusible ink and make coasters like this. More card stock designs down here and then um, more permanent vinyl ideas down here. So the Cricut Explore Air 2 really does take a lot of your crafting needs and desires and helps you bring those to life. Now, if you want to go another step, let me introduce you to the Explore Air 3. The Explore Air 3 is fast, it's simple, and it's amazing. It has a lot of the same features in that you find in Explore Air 2 in that it's both Bluetooth, it cuts 11 and a half inches wide, it has a storage caddy for your tools and things, but let me tell you how it's a little bit different than the Explore Air 2. The Explore Air 3 is compatible with smart materials. So again, smart materials feed directly into your machine without using a cutting mat. It just is a load and go. And with that feature, it allows you to cut materials that are 12 feet long by 11 and a half, or actually I think it's 12 inches wide by 12 feet long. And you don't need a mat to do that. So we've expanded the length with which you can cut and create borders and things like that. The Explore Air 3 also cuts faster when cutting with smart materials. And it really does. I cut um, a whole group of uh, t-shirts out for a family vacation this summer. And I think I cut like 12 shirts or 15 shirts in about 12 minutes. So it really does um, cut a lot faster because you're not taking it on and off a mat. You're just loading in one roll of vinyl and boom, it was cutting it all. The Explore Air also cuts over 100 different types of materials like uh, the Explore 2. It works with cardstock, vinyl, iron-on, and special materials like glitter paper and leather. The Explore Air 3 also draws, writes, and cuts, and scores. And you can use all of the same tools that you used with the Explore 2 in the Explore 3. So the smart materials and the speed is really the big improvement on the Explore 3. So let's go into a little bit more detail and explore the, the sleekness of this design. That's one, when I look at the two next to each other, um, this one just seems so much more sleek. They've removed the dial on the right. 
um, and added the another compartment. So we'll get to that in just a second. So it also works with the two holders, tool holders here, housing tools, and you can in clamp A, again, put your pens and your stylus, and then in clamp B, your cutting um, tools. And it's the same cutting tools between the Explore 2 and the Explore 3. So if you're looking to upgrade, you can use the machine tools that you already have. Also in the Explore 3, they've added this cool bar here that will hold your mobile devices. And this is really important because as crafters, we're crafting on the go or moving from room to room. So being able to just take your iPad or your tablet device and your machine and go craft somewhere else is a great, um, it's a great little feature there. So you can see here, they've removed the dial on the top right and all of your material settings are now done in the software. The buttons are also a little bit sleeker and let's see if I've got a good overhead. The buttons are a little bit sleeker and flat to the surface of your machine and the images are more universal to really symbolize the on off with the power button to unload and load your mats to go ahead and start cutting and to pause um, your feature. This reminds me of a boom box I had when I was a kid in the 80s. <laughs> okay, and then over here on the left side, we have that dual caddy um, tool holder here, which is super nice. It has like a silicone bottom in it. So if you were to put your blades here, it won't puncture or, or tear at the holders, but it also won't damage your blades. And then this um, little button here is you push that and it slowly opens your canister. Now let's go over some of the different things and give us a little bit of a close up look at the different um, projects you can create with the Explore Air 2. So using permanent vinyl, you can embellish these um, tumblers, which is a very popular thing to do. Over here we have um, iron-on, transfer that is used to create this t-shirt. You can also use the Explore Air 2 and 3 to create cards using cardstock and longer designs on the Explore Air 3. You can really go longer. So you go past that 24 inches to 36 or 48 inches. This is, oops, sorry. This is what it looks like when you're using a roll of vinyl without a cutting mat. You just load that vinyl in and go. So, you know, one thing that I really appreciate with Cricut is that it grows with us as crafters. So as you think about, you know, how you started crafting, um, you may have just been making cards and now you're making t-shirts and what will you make next? Um, the smart materials really opened my mind to new crafting ideas and new crafting possibilities. When they came out with the three, I thought, oh, you know, I'm really happy with my Explorer um, machine and I don't need, I don't need a three, but then I started walking around the house and looking at where I could use longer vinyl cuts or longer um, iron on cuts and things like that. And some of these gave me the inspiration to create your own headboard using longer cuts or the wonderful welcome signs using the longer cuts. So it really, it really opened my, my creative spirit to other things I could create using the longer cuts um, that were available with the smart materials. So, you know, before I go on to there, um, so real quick, Lindsay or Anita, are there any questions about the Explore Air 2 that have popped up that I can answer before we go into Maker? No, Kesley, we have got them all answered and I think everyone is excited and ready to learn. All right, perfect. So if you if you're like, yeah, the Explore is the machine for me. That's the one I want. Um, and you're trying to decide between the two or the three. I always um, suggest you think about three questions as you as you begin to decide. So knowing what your budget is, knowing what you're making today, and what you want to make in the future. Those, if you can answer those three questions, that will help you determine, do you go for an Explore 3 or an Explore 2? Um, either way, you're just going to, you're going to be happy and you're going to be creating. Now let's meet the maker. The maker has more tools and therefore it offers more possibilities. So why, what does that mean? How is it different? The Joy had one 
tool holder. And then we went to the Explore Air 2 that had two tool holders, but used similar tools. The maker works on a quick swap um, gear tool system that you can see right here. And you can really see how it's much, the, the tools are different between what are available on the Explore and the Maker. And so for me, looking at the Maker, it just um, took my crafting heart away. I sew. So the idea that I would have a rotary cutter um, a rotary blade to cut with was fantastic. And the precision that I got with the rotary blade was great, especially when I was um, wanted to cut out fabric. So with the, with the Cricut Maker and the adaptive tool system, you can really expand the materials that you can cut. So Cricut Joy cuts up to 50 different materials. Explore cuts up to 100 different materials, and the maker cuts 300 plus materials. So it does all the materials that the maker and the, and the Joy, I mean, that the Cricut, that the Joy and the Explore do, but it also does materials like glitter paper, leather, very delicate crepe type of paper, fabrics, mat boards, um, bass baseboards, um, all different types of heavier materials you can cut with the maker. Now it does have this different tool system. So you do use different tools that are available on the Explore. It has a quick housing, um, a quick swap housing. So you just change the blade. You don't have to change the entire gear shift at the top. So with the quick swap tools, you can do things like score. There's a scoring blade that's down here, you, there's a double scoring blade, engraving and debossing and other decorative um, effects like a wavy blade, which is fun. I think of the Cricut Maker sort of gives you DIY freedom because there's virtually nothing you can't create with the Maker. So let's look over at some of the materials that you can, um, you can some of the things you can cut on the maker. You can cut fabric on the maker. And I love this, um, the um, washable pen here that you can use on fabric. So I've used this to draw out a design and then hand embroider that design um, on the fabric, which was a fantastic way to work. You can also cut out this, very thin ba base wood. I don't know if it's base or bass, but the, the very thin, almost like a balsa wood, it's thinner than balsa wood, but you can make earrings and different jewelry using this wood and um, vinyl, marine vinyl and leather cuts out beautifully. You also have, this is the wood type of design here in creating a puzzle, but you can do all of the things that you can do on your um, explore like cutting out iron-on vinyl, infusible inks, regular vinyl, um, and then also your cardstock um, needs can come through there. This beautiful card has been created using the foil tool and adding the foil design onto the words, writing that out. So now as you look at the Cricut Maker 3, and again, don't forget, we did jump over two from Maker to 3. Um, we just popped right over that. So the Cricut Maker 3 is a powerful, versatile, and really revolutionary machine. So it has all of the great features that the Maker um, that the maker has, plus all of the great features that are available to you using smart materials. So again, those smart materials feed directly into the machine and you can cut those really long 12 foot cuts. Um, you also can cut faster using smart materials and um, your, your tools that are available on the maker also work on the Maker 3. So as you look closer at the Maker 3, you can see it's got the same quick swap housing as the Maker does. So those tools will work between the two machines. So just another look at some of the fabulous things you can create with the Maker. Um, using smart materials, you can really make these longer cuts that make um, these designs on the cubby holes as well as your welcome signs. These cards here in the upper right corner were made using the perforation blade that is a unique tool to the maker. 
And I love this setup down here using your iPad and design space on the go to cut using your materials on the roll, using leather down here in the bottom left and our iron on vinyl here on the bottom right. So, so much you can create. But really the question is, how does it all come together? So Cricut offers a, a multi-complementary products um, that bring all of it together for your creative use. So let's take a look at some of those things. Using your Cricut machines, whether it's an explorer or a maker, then you would use the design space software, either on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet or your desktop and laptop. Then they've added tools, cutting tools, um, weeding tools. I love my paper trimmer tools that all work together. And then the last part are the materials. So using all of these different things together is how you can bring your friends in, make family gifts, and really just explore your creative wishes. So how do you get started? Once you've decided on the machine you want that meets your crafting needs, the next step is understanding sort of how it all comes together. So Cricut has this great software called Design Space, and Design Space will work on a computer or a laptop. It will also work on your mobile devices, a tablet or a phone. So no matter which device you're working with, you will use Design Space. And with Design Space, you have what's called a Cricut ID. So you log into Design Space using your Cricut ID, and it doesn't matter how many machines you have or which machines you have or which device you're using Design Space on, it all talks together because it's a cloud, the, the software is cloud-based. So here's what that means for you. If I'm working on my computer, let's say I'm in, in my office, I'm working on my computer and my printer is in, in the next room or a different level of the house. I can design on my desktop here and then pick up my tablet and walk closer to my printer and pull up my device, pull up my design on my printer and stand there and watch it come out and then come back to where my desktop is. Maybe my, my Cricut machine is hooked up to my desktop. I can um, cut my design right there. Or if I'm um, working on taking kids to school and have a couple minutes on the parking lot, I can pull up design space on my mobile device, design something right there. And then when I get home, hook up my mobile device through Bluetooth with my machine and cut it out. So it doesn't matter which device you're using, how many different devices you use. It all talks together and your projects are saved up on the cloud and using your Cricut ID, you can just pull them down later. So in design space, you have this great um, idea projects that you can pull out and create projects from. You can upload your own images in design space. But let's talk a little bit more about images. So where do you start? So Cricut has um, Cricut Access, which gives you three different options to choose from. So if you are a crafter that's just getting started, you really just want, you're not interested in making your own designs or going out to another source and finding designs, you can use Cricut Access, which has over 200,000 um, images to work with. So really, I, I can find almost everything I need within Cricut Access. And it gives you um, fonts. I think it's like 500 fonts over a thousand different projects to work with. And then you do get some perks and benefits from being a Cricut Access member. So if you use the standard version, you get 10% off um, of your purchases, including machines. And then you also get priority member care. And member care is super good. If you have a question, you can reach out to member care and they can answer that question for you. And then they do offer a premium version of Cricut Access and also if you, a free version. So there's a version of Cricut Access that will work for everybody's needs. In the um, free version, you use Design Space and you can have access to about 200 different images that you can use for free, and you can purchase images a la carte. 
So if you are looking for a particular image and you find it in Cricut Access, you can just purchase that one image and use that image in Cricut Access. Okay, so I know that always, we always get a couple questions about that. Do I need to clarify anything? Did anything pop up? Kesley, we had a great question about um, a little while ago about um, with the maker debossing and some of the different tools. If um, you could just elaborate on that a little bit, I think that would be very helpful. Sure. So Cricut um, Maker has different tools that um, you just swap it out. Let me go back. Let me see if I can go back to the Cricut Maker slide here. Let's go back a little bit just so I can have it in front of us. Um, so the Cricut, oh, that's really far back. Okay, so Cricut Maker has different cartridges that you um, can insert into the gear housing. So like right here, this is the gear housing. And so some of those tools are a debossing tool, an engraving tool. The engraving tool is great to use on acrylic materials. So you can engrave a design right onto an acrylic, acrylic tools or like a little metal disc. It's really fun to do that. I've used it to make um, acrylic ornament designs before. And then the debossing tool is like embossing, but reverse. So when you think about debossing, it actually pushes into the material where embossing raises on top of the material. So the debossing tool pushes down into the material and makes sort of like an indent into the material, if you will. And then there's other tools, the perforation tool. So that, that card that was used to peel off um, the sticks, it, it perforates the edge. So it's great if you're making something that you want like a coupon book or something that you want to be able to peel off. And then the scoring wheel, it's just, a, it, it's like a little bit extra boost over the scoring stylus tool, which does work in the maker. Um, this, the scoring wheels have a double scoring wheel that allows you to score heavier materials. So if you need to score something like a chipboard or glitter paper, then that you would use your scoring tool in the maker and it would really let you get into a little bit deeper of a cut. So I see questions, Catherine's asking, do you have to use a mat for Cricut Maker or can you use a vinyl as a roll? So the, um, the Cricut, the, let's start, start talking about some of the materials. So up until the three versions, Cricut Maker 3 or Explore 3, you need to cut using a mat. And the mat is limited um, 12 inches wide by 24 inches long. So the, the maximum size you can cut on an Explore 2 or a Maker is, is 24 inches long. With smart materials and the ability to cut without a mat allows you to cut a design up to 12 feet long. So, um, so you use the smart materials in your Explore 3, Maker 3, and Cricut Joy. And Cricut Joy has shorter um, rolls of material that you can use. So they work without a mat. Now you can still use a mat in your Explore 3 and your Maker 3 for all the different other materials that you'll be using, but it's the, the smart materials work with the Explore 3, the Maker 3, and the Joy in cutting without a mat. So it really does let you go, go longer and go more. So if you're cutting vinyl, you do have two types of uh, vinyl to cut with. You have a removable vinyl and a permanent vinyl. So removable vinyl makes your projects a dream. Um, it can really allow you to personalize small spaces, big spaces, temporarily. Um, and that's the key word with the removable vinyl. So I think when I use removable vinyl, I think about where I'm putting it. Is it good? Do I want it to be there permanently or is it a seasonal thing or something that um, down the road I'll want to peel off? So if I were renting an apartment or if I'm doing something seasonal, I tend to use removable vinyl. Um, you know, like I do uh, flower pots for each year my children graduate and I just, I keep the 20 there and then I pull off the 18 and then the 19 and then I'll add 22 onto that. Um, 
And, and that you can do with removable vinyl. Now, if you're using permanent vinyl, permanent vinyl will literally last and last and last. It's water resistant and UV resistant. It will last up to three years and it's great in all the outdoor settings. Um, it's also dishwasher friendly. So it, the permanent vinyl, it really is to be there permanently. Um, now I have used permanent vinyl um, and been able to really been able to remove it, but the intent of permanent vinyl is for it to be there permanently. So the um, transfer tape is what you use when you use the vinyl. So no matter if you're using a permanent vinyl or a temporary vinyl, transfer tape is used to transfer your vinyl design from the vinyl paper backing onto the transfer tape and then onto your, we call it a blank. So in this example here, on the upper left here, the mug or the planter, the um, black triangles have been cut out using your Cricut Maker and, and weeded. So weeding is where you remove the material that you don't want to transfer in your design. That's not part of your design. And so then you're just left with these little triangles and this clear transfer tape being held in the right hand is put down over a piece of vinyl that's been cut out. And that vinyl design is then um, transferred onto the clear tape. And then you put that onto your blank and then remove the transfer tape and your design will stay on the um, surface that you've put it on. So here's like this wall squiggle has been put on transfer tape and then put on the wall and is now being, re the transfer tape is now being removed. So that um, stays on the wall. So that's transfer tape. So you do need transfer tape, whether you're working with permanent vinyl or temporary vinyl. Now, iron-on vinyl, it works fabulous with a wide variety of your materials. You can use it on things like wood, you can use it on t-shirts, on jeans, all kinds of different canvas, you can use um, the iron-on vinyl. The iron-on vinyl does not require a transfer. It, it almost has its own carrier with it. So you put your iron-on vinyl in your in your machine and you cut out your design and you weed out the parts that you don't want. And then you place it on you know, your bag or your t-shirt or these little wood earrings and you use an easy press. Let's see, oops. You use an easy press to push, to heat up the vinyl and the adhesive on the back of that vinyl adheres to the material that you're putting it on. And now the difference between infusible ink and heat transfer vinyl, infusible ink is, um, it's a, a permanently, the ink comes off the transfer paper and it's permanently infused into the base material. And it will last for, like it will last and last and last. Um, but infusible ink does need to be put on specific materials. So you need to put it on a material that has a coating to it so that it will take the infusible ink or if you're using fabrics, it has to have a really high polyester um, portion. And when we go to the big screen, I'll show you something I've made with that uses infusible ink and heat transfer. So to get that heat and that power, Cricut has these easy press um, irons. So you can use, it comes in a variety of sizes. This little, little guy, I can't remember what he's called, the, what is he called? The little itty bitty um, press, but it really allows you to get into some unique spaces and do some hand ironing. And then you have the bigger machines um, that, that work on bigger materials as you're working along. Oops. Now the great, there's lots of great places to learn more. We have, um, classes with Michaels. We offer design space orientation, actions in design space, and project-based learning classes. We also, um, let's see if there's one more. Um, I'm going to leave this up here as you guys are looking through and 
asking questions on which is the right machine for you. So we this, this chart here has all the different machines across the top. We start with the Cricut Joy, that little four and a half inch, your buddy cutter, and then move to the Explore 2 and the Explore 3 with information, and then grouping over to the next family, the Maker and the Maker 3. So this tells you a little bit of more information, um, sort of a side-by-side -side comparison um, between the two. And I see this great question from Paula. Can you simply use a regular iron with heat transfer designs or iron-ons? And Paula, the answer is you can use iron, just a regular iron to transfer your design on. Um, the difference between the, e one of the differences between the easy presses, you can control the temperature, um, so you, you don't worry about like having your steam setting on versus just the heat setting. And you can go really hot, like the infusible ink really needs a high temperature. So you have more control over your temperature with the easy press. And also I found um, the easy press because if you're doing like a t-shirt or something like that, I use my bigger easy press and I um, press down with that, I get even heat across my design. So with an iron, you only have, you know, if your design is only four inches wide, then you should be okay. You wouldn't have any problems moving across um, your design and having it stick. With the easy press, you can put an entire um, 12 inches by, I think, 12 inches by 12 inches, there may even be a bigger one. And you can put that on top of the whole surface and it, it presses the heat evenly across the surface. So those are, those are good things. All right, now we can jump into more Q&A. So guys, if you have questions, please continue to put them up there. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Actually, I'll stop sharing in just a second. Um, if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this, this class is being recorded and it will be available for you on the Michael's YouTube channel. So you can always access this um, chart here. But if you wanted to go ahead and take a screenshot of it, please feel free. I'm gonna leave it up there for just another couple of minutes while anybody's asking questions in our Q&A. We have about 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes to answer questions. So this is a great opportunity you have three of us here um, to answer your specific questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing that. And let me just show you real quick. I mentioned I was gonna share this. Um, this is a pillow that I use. It's a Cricut um, pillow cover. And I used infusible ink for this um, splash of color here on the top. And then to get this sparkly, get your spook on, I use, um, heat transfer vinyl on this. So I use both methods, the um, infusible ink and then the shimmer heat transfer vinyl to do that, which I think that's really fun. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. And then um, on the, I haven't, I haven't changed over my designs. Um, I used iron-on vinyl on that canvas, but you could use an iron-on mm -hmm. vinyl or you could use, um, just a regular permanent vinyl or temporary vinyl even, and then you could take them off and switch them over to turkeys if you wanted to. Leslie, I've seen lots of questions about the print and cut feature. If you could go over that, that'd be great. Great, yeah, so print and cut is, a we get a lot of questions about print and cut. Print and cut allows you to use your home printer and print off um, a design and then bring that design, that paper design, or if you print it on a different material, bring that back to your machine and put it on a mat and allow it to go through and it cuts like the outline of your shape. So if you are interested in making stickers, you could print on the Cricut sticker paper and then bring that back to your machine and cut that design on your sticker paper. It's also great if you want to do um, like cake toppers, little cupcake toppers, and you wanna do like a little design and you just wanna print the design and then cut out the design. You can do that with the print then cut feature. So it really is print it, then cut. So it's fine. And it, you know, honestly, like with that one, you just have to dive in. Those are, that's one of the things that if you, you just dive in and get started with it and you'll, it, it'll all make sense as you go along. 
And Kesley, there are lots of questions about beginner classes. Yes. Um, we have, we have, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name. We have um, design space orientation and actions in design space. Mm -hmm. We do not have any classes, live classes for those in the next few weeks. But if you go to Michael's YouTube channel, there are many, many past classes that you can go and watch at your own pace, pause, um, rewatch, you know, go, go as needed. Um, so those are really great resources to start with. Definitely. And we do uh, in those classes too, we make a project. So we talk you, we walk you through design space and get you familiar with it in the, in the one, in the actions in design space. We familiarize you with what design space is and how does it work. And then we make um, a tumbler with that class. And I'm just looking to see if I had my tumbler handy. Um, and then in the actions in design space, we really get more in depth about what you can do in design space using shapes, using um, slice and weld, and we make a really cute um, cover for a journal, or you can add it to a tumbler too. And it's really good because you can pause the class and play the class. And we do have some very fun classes coming up um, in with Michael's coming up. I, can I show my um, my hot chocolate class? All right, nobody's seen this part. So if you're interested, we have um, this class coming up, and this in this class we'll do some vinyl design on a piece of um, acrylic. We'll be using the mug press to an infusible ink to make mugs. And then showing you how to use vinyl on cardstock as well as on, um, on your little jars and things like that to decorate and embellish. So this, I'm really excited about this class. We have a lot of fun things coming up in that one. So that's gonna be a good one. All right. Kesley, there was a question about using the pens. If you could go over that, that'd be great. Great. Um, the pens, I actually have my pens right here. So you have a lot of different pens to choose from. And I say a lot. There are fine point pens, there's markers, there's gels, there's all types of pens. And when you're working in design space, so let's say you want to make um, a card and you want to write something on the card. And then you also want to cut out some embellishments to go on the card. When you work on design space and you get to that last screen of of saying what material you're using, it will tell you, put your pen in, clamp A, and if it if you switch it, so like if you cut, if you make a design with a multiple different um, different colors, it'll tell you, okay, use your jewel tone this one, then use your jewel tone this one, now switch to this pen. And it it tells you how to do that as you go through and you walk um, and you walk through your designs. All of the I, that's one thing I, I really uh -oh. I really like about the design space software is it is so user friendly and it takes you along the journey with it. Sorry, let me grab this. So like this is another, this is a tip. This is the foil tip. Um, let's see if I can get that. That's the foil tip. And you put down a piece of foil and it uses pressure to draw the lines in your design. So instead of using um a pen, you would use the foil tool and it would draw the, the lines on the foil and then the foil through the pressure is transferred onto your paper. Um, and that's a really, that works. We have it, for, you can use this tool in the Maker and the Explorer. And we also have one specifically for the Joy. So that's always fun. So I see Margaret is asking, can you make printed disposable coffee cups and sleeves using the Cricut Maker? So Margaret, I would say you can definitely make um, coffee cup sleeves in the Maker and, and the um, Explore Air 2. I'm not sure if the arch would be too big for your Cricut Joy, but definitely um, you can make sleeve wraps for coffee cups. I don't know that you'd be able to make a coffee cup 
because I don't know if it would be waterproof. Um, so I, I don't have an answer for, I haven't tried that, but you can definitely make a sleeve um, for your coffee cup. And you can also make um, a sleeve for cupcakes I've seen. So when you, when you make a cupcake and it has a little sleeve that you can drop your cupcake in, which is really cute. Pamela is asking, can you use coasters that are water absorbable? The ones I am seeing from Cricut are not. Can you use coasters? So I guess that would mean I, I'd need a little bit more information on that. Um, you can cut cork out of your Cricut maker and then adhere it to the bottom of your um, coaster. But I think the wood coasters do have an absorbable, like the bottom of it might be absorbent. So check that on the wood coasters, the square ones with the rounded corners. Those might be what you're looking for. Beverly's asking, if I'm a beginner, if I want to create a Hello Kids, Kitty or Disney characters for a gift, how do I do that? Oh, Beverly, we have some of the, I'm a Hello Kitty at heart myself. Um, there's lots of cute um, Hello Kitty and Disney content, lots of Mandalorian stuff. Those are all licensed materials. I mean, licensed content and they're a la carte. So even if you have Cricut access, you can purchase the licensed artwork in the United States. And I do think it differs a little bit if you're out of the United States versus in the United States. Um, but you can purchase those images a la carte and then you can use those images in design space to, to make your creation. So once you've purchased that image, you have access to that image as long as, as long as you're in design space. Kesley, there is a question about what tool should I purchase to get started? That is such a great question that I think needs answering live. Okay, great. So I would say once you've decided um, the machine you'll be, you'll be selecting, um, the next step is to decide what you're going to create. So I, I would always encourage somebody who's getting started to work with cardstock because it's pretty inexpensive. And if you cut out, as you're learning how to cut out your designs, um, it, it's, for, it's forgiving. <laughs> you, know, you won't get as mad if you make a mistake on a 12 cent piece of paper versus an $8 roll of vinyl. So I do recommend you start with cardstock. So along with your machine, and Michael's has some awesome like stacks of cardstock. You can just buy a whole pack of it um, to cut with. Then I would recommend you um, get, I would also start with card making. So you might want to pick up the stylus tool that clips into clamp A. And this is also really great if you're making boxes and things like that. You'll want to need, if you go into vinyl, you'll want to use a weeding tool. And this is a tool that has a really sharp tip on it. I also love my paper trimmer. This is invaluable to me. Um, I am a paper I scrapbooked, so I, like paper um, trimmers are great. The vinyl rolls all have a grid on the back, so you don't have to have a paper trimmer. You can cut it with scissors. Um, so that's what I would get. And then I would start with um, the blue light grip mat, um, which is great for cardstock. Start with that and cut out some of your cardstock designs. And be forgiving with yourself. You will make mistakes. You're learning an entire, um, a whole new thought process. Like you're gonna learn terms that you didn't even know existed. So you really need to be patient with yourself and patient with the software. It really does do everything that you think it can do. It's just learning where, where those features are and how to make them happen. Um, so I, I'd buy yourself a dose of patience as you start as well. And that's, a, that's what I start with. I'll read some more Q and A's. Um, Anne is asking, so I put the towel on, on the board and then the t-shirt, then iron it onto the transfer and t-shirt. Um, so Anne, I think what you're asking is the, the method with which you use iron on. So if you're, um, if you're doing something like this, the pillow, you would, if you you'd put it on your, on a flat, I like to use a flat surface um, to iron on because especially if I'm doing something bigger like this. So I do like to do a hard flat surface. You can put a towel down. Um, I have a fabric I got from the craft store that um, it like a sheet 
that I put down. And then, and Cricut also has these great mats. I'm okay. <laughs> Cricut has these great mats here that are the size of the heat press. So you would put this down, your t-shirt down, your vinyl on top of this, and you can put a piece of parchment paper or um, I, I like to put something between my transfer and my iron just in case I have a little fleck on it that's come over and I don't want it there. I don't get anything on my iron. So then I just put like a little Teflon sheet on it and I put my iron down on it that way. So the hot, Sharon, the hot cocoa class is um, online. So you can pop in and take that class. It's going to be a fun one. So Trish is asking, how can you print a photo on a t-shirt? Trish, great question, very fun. You just need um, paper that would transfer the image. You don't even need to, to use Cricut unless you were cutting it out, um, but you would just use photo transfer paper that you could print an image on heat transfer paper that you could print printable heat transfer paper. So you could print the image onto that and then turn that onto a t-shirt. So if you wanted to, you could upload your image into design space. If you wanted to cut around it or cut it into a heart shape or something like that, you would do that, set that up in design space, load your home printer with the printable heat transfer vinyl, print it out and then come back and cut out the shape and then iron it on. So Latanya is asking if you're in design space text, how do you use height and width? That's a great question. And we go over that in actions in design space. We really talk about how to use text and, and working with text to create designs. So Catherine saying, I am most nervous about using mats for cutting. I use a Maker 3 to help me with felt work. How long do mats last? Oh, great question, Catherine. So mats really last quite a long time. I do keep my mats clean. So I, I make sure that I don't get dust on them. I put the plastic sleeve back on the mat. Um, so I keep it clean and my mats last. There's It just depends on how much you're cutting. Um, and what you're cutting. So if you're cutting felt on the pink fabric mat, it will get, you know, that, that felt, you'll have more um, little specks of linen left on or felt left on your mat. So it is important to just clean that off. And there's great um, instructions on how to do that on the Cricut website, how to, how to clean your mats. Um, I definitely, if I'm using fabric, I want to make sure I get all those little pieces of fabric that are left over. But cutting on a mat is super easy. easy. You just, it has adhesive on it. So your mats have a little bit of tacky and the different mats have different amounts of, and, of stick. So this is the light adhesive. And I use this for cards and lighter materials um, that I don't want to really stick too hard to. And you just, um, the, you keep your plastic sleeve on it until you're ready to use it. You take this off, you use your mat. And if you get debris on it or you forget to cover it up, you can just wipe it clean. And so that just depends. <laughs> um, So Katie, that's a good question. I would call your local store directly. Katie's asking, she'd like to exchange her machine. Um, I would call your local store directly and see if they can exchange it for you. If you haven't opened the box and you have the, re and you have the receipt, I, I know at my Michaels where I live is great. And um, they would work with me to exchange that, I think. So many good questions are coming through. I love this. I don't know if we're going to get to them all. Um, I'll try and answer a few more. How can I print from Design Space? Yes, and you can print directly from Design Space. So when you bring in an image and you set that image to print then cut in the options, it when you send it to your machine, it will say, oh, wait a minute, you got to print it first before you can cut it. So the software really does take you step by step 
um, what whatever operation you're doing. Um, so if you're doing a print and cut, it will walk you through each step. If you're using the foil tip, it will walk you through each step of that. Really very clear directions on how to do that. So another question, what is the advantage of slice versus just an outline cut for stencils? I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean by that. Slice is when you um, merge two, you have two images and you wanna cut one from the other. So you slice that. If you're looking to make a stencil design, you would just take your design and cut it on the stencil vinyl um, and then use that to transfer your design. Like if you, I know the doormats are really popular. And so you, you, you can use the stencil vinyl to cut out your design and then transfer that design onto the doormat and then use the um, black or whatever color you want to design your doormat. Okay, so I see one more and then I think we're gonna get kicked off. Do you need any special programs to convert PDFs into the format files that the design space program will recognize? Um, you know, I do, I'm trying to think, I don't know if design space, you don't, does it do PDFs, Anita? Oh, we, your speaker's off, but we can't hear you. Thank you. It does JPG, GIF, PNG, BMP, or for vector files, it has to be SVG or DXF. And that is the file type it needs to be created in. We do not recommend that you just take a file and change the file type to SVG or something that will not work in design yeah. space. Good point. So you can upload a PDF. You would need to change a PDF. The easiest way to change a PDF to one of those other file types is to take a screenshot or to use your snipping tool. Okay, and just convert it to a JPEG and then- Yes, yeah. and save it as one of those file types. I hadn't, I hadn't tried a, a PDF, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, it just does not read PDFs. It's not one of the file types that we support. Okay, and when you go into design space, um, on, if you're on a desktop, on the left side, you'll see an upload button. And when you click on the upload button, um, the screen pops up and it's, it actually it says what type of file formats you need to upload, whether that is a JPG, which is it, which would be like a photo, or a PNG, which has the clear background to it, or an SVG, which actually has uh, the markings for where the machine would cut. So when you go into design space, go to upload, and then you can see what the file types are on that screen. And as a beginner, there is absolutely no harm in going ahead and downloading design space, watching our videos on um, design space orientation or um, design uh, actions in design space, watching those videos and familiarizing yourself with the machine and the software um, even before you make your first cut. So if you know you're getting a machine for Christmas, let's say, or, or the ho any holiday that's coming up, a gifting holiday, if you know like, oh, I've, I've got that on my wish list, go ahead and download design space, join us for a class, and, and, and just learn, take the next six weeks and just absorb it all in so that when that big day comes and you open up your box, you're like, I'm ready to go. I know, I know what to do. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the time. Thank you, Lindsay and Anita for your flying fingers and answering all those questions. Really appreciate it. Have a great day.